Hi there, we have a thought for the day, and again, we're reading from the book on the taboo against knowing who you are by Alan Watts. And this comes from page 74, and uh, it's called You Have Been Hypnotized. You have been hypnotized or conditioned by an educational processing system arranged in grades or steps, supposedly leading to some ultimate success. First nursery school or kindergarten, and then the grades or forms of elementary school, preparing you for that great moment of secondary school. But then more steps up and up to the coveted goal of the university. Here, if you are clever, you can stay on indefinitely by getting into graduate school and becoming a permanent student. Otherwise, you're headed step by step for the great outside world a family raising, business, and profession. Yet graduation day is a very temporary fulfillment for with your first sales promotion meeting. You are back in the same old system, being urged to make that quota. And if you do, they'll give you a higher quota. And so progress up the ladder to sales manager, vice president, and at last, president of your own show, hopefully by age 40 or 45. In the meantime, the insurance and investment people have been interesting you in plans for retirement. That really ultimate goal of being able to sit back and enjoy the fruits of all your labors. But when that day comes, your anxieties and exertions will have left you with a weak heart, false teeth, prostate trouble, sexual impotence, fuzzy eyesight, and a vile digestion digestion. All of this might have been wonderful if at every stage you had been able to play it as a game, finding your work as fascinating as poker, chess, or fishing. But for most of us, the day is divided into work time and play time, the work consisting largely of tasks which others pay us to do because they are abysmally uninteresting. We therefore work, not for the work's sake, but for the money. And money is supposed to get us what we really want in our hours of leisure and play. In the United States, even poor people have lots of money compared with the wretched and skinny millions of India, Africa, China, while our middle and upper classes, or should we say income groups, are as prosperous as princes. Yet, by and large, they have but slight taste for pleasure. Money alone cannot buy pleasure, though it can help. For enjoyment is an art and a skill for which we have little talent or energy. I live close to a harbor packed with sailing boats and luxurious cruisers which are seldom used because seamanship is a difficult though rewarding art which their owners have no time to practice. They bought the boats either as status symbols or as toys, but on discovering that they were not toys as advertised, they lost interest. The same is true of the entire and astounding abundance of pleasure goods that we can buy. Foodstuffs are prolific, but few know how to cook. Building materials abound in both quantity and variety, yet most homes look as if they had been made by someone who had heard of a house but never seen one. Silks, linens, wools, and cottons are available in colors and patterns galore. 
and yet most men dress like divinity students or undertakers. While most women are slaves to the fashion game with its basic rule, I have conformed sooner than you. The market for artists and sculptors has thrived as never before in history. But the paintings look as if they have been made with excrement or scraps from billboards. And the sculptures look like mangled typewriters or charred lumber from a burned-down outhouse. We have untold stacks of recorded music from every age and culture, and the superb means of playing it. Well, who actually listens? This is perhaps a Henry Miller-ish exaggeration. Nevertheless, it strikes me more and more that America's reputation for materialism is unfounded. That is, if a materialist is a person who thoroughly enjoys the physical world and loves material things. In this sense, we are superb materialists when it comes to the construction of jet aircraft. But when we decorate the inside of these magnificent monsters for the comfort of passengers, it's nothing but frippery. High-heeled, narrow-hipped, doll-type girls serving imitation warmed-over meals. For our pleasures are not material pleasures, they are only the symbols of pleasure, attractively packaged, but inferior in content. The explanation is simple. Most of our products are being made by people who do not enjoy making them, whether as owners or as workers. Their aim in the enterprise is not the product, but the money. And therefore, every trick is used to cut the cost of production and hoodwink the buyer by coloring and packaging chicanery into the belief that the product is well and truly made. The only exceptions are those products which simply must be excellent for reasons of safety or high cost of purchase. Aircraft, computers, space rockets, scientific instruments, and so forth. But the whole scheme is a vicious circle. For when you have made the money, what will you buy with it? Other pretentious fakes made by other money mad manufacturers? The few real luxuries on the market are imports from backward countries where peasants and craftsmen still take pride in their work. For example, the state of Oaxaca in Mexico produces some of the finest blankets in the world and American buyers have been trying to import them in huge quantities. But no amount of money will give the relatively few craftsmen who weave them more time to fill the order. If they want the order, they must begin to cheat and produce inferior blankets. The only solution would be to train hundreds of new craftsmen. But Oaxaca is just now getting television and has, for some time, had public education. So what up-and-coming young person would want to waste his days weaving blankets? So as you go through your day, ask yourself, are you doing what you love? Are you doing something that is you're doing only for the money? It is just something for money? Are you selling your soul for insurance because you fear getting sick, being caught in the medical system? Think about what you're doing. How do you want to spend your precious time? And what is your definition of pleasure? and have a great day.